Hello and welcome. Today we're working on a real life time value of money example using Bobby Bonilla Day, which is a former New York Mets baseball player that gets paid every year about $1.2 million, even though he's been retired for about 20 years. So let's dig into it. Bobby Bonilla Day is celebrated kind of in a joking way on July 1st every year because the New York Mets pay a former baseball player, a retired baseball player, $1.19 million each year. Now, I got a lot of the information from this article. I'll link in the description below. So let's talk about what happened. The New York Mets in 2000 owed baseball player Bobby Bonilla $5.9 million. The Mets go to Bobby Bonilla and his agent and they say, we want to defer the money. Could we defer it for 11 years until 2011 and then starting in 2011 we'll start making payments and we'll make payments for 25 years until the year 2035. So the Mets say we'll give you to do this we'll give you six percent annual interest. Bobby Bonilla and his agent said we want 10 percent so they agreed to eight percent. So let's think about why they did this. Well the Mets were friends. The owner, Fred Wilpon, was friends with Bernie Madoff. You know, you may know Bernie Madoff is the financier behind the largest Ponzi scheme in history at about $65 billion. This was a fraud. He was uh, now became a convicted felon later on. But they said, hey, we can pay 8% because our friend, Bernie Madoff, we have investments with him, and he promises a guaranteed 10 12%, maybe even a little higher, return each year. So yeah, if we're getting 12% guaranteed, we're happy to give 8% guaranteed. Well, the interesting thing is Dennis Gilbert was the agent for Bobby Bonilla, and so he is famous for creating more deferred contracts in baseball because an athlete only has certain years to play, and then when they get older, they may not have money so they defer some of that contract, and so therefore they get paid. So here's how it worked out. This $5.9 million, we're going to start making payments in 2011 to 2035, but it grows, it grows at 8% even though payments aren't being made. So it works out to be $1,193,248.20, and that gets paid every July 1st, for 25 years. Now, I'm recording this video in 2021, so we've paid about 11 of those uh, payments, and so you have maybe 14 more years to go. Now, it works out to be, instead of paying him 5.9 million, since you stretched it out over a long period of time, it looks like it's gonna be $29.8 million total. Dennis Gilbert has a great quote, it's not what you make or what you have, it's what you keep. Deferred compensation helps you keep your money. So Bobby Bonilla is still receiving checks every July 1st of $1,193,000. All right, so let me explain how this works, and let's do the math behind the time value of money. Well, let me just show you a graph. So they owed $5.9 million, and it grew all the way to about $13.8 million. So in the time that it was all deferred, there's no payments being made, that 5.9 million grew to $13,756,670. And then at that point in 2011, they started making payments. And because they deferred this over time, these payments add up to be $29.8 million. So where we are right now is he's already received the 2021 payment and he has this many payments to go. Looks like he still has a total of $16.7 million in payments that he's set to receive. So let's show you how to do this on Excel. So let me get rid of all this and we'll show you how it works. So there's this is a time value money problem. It's in two stages. There's the growth stage and then the payment stage. So the periods per year is going to be 1. The number of periods is going to be 11. The interest rate is 8. The present value is 5900000 5900000 There's no payment. So what does it grow to? So this is how you do uh, the time value of money. Remember, this is going to be the future value calculation. So future value, the rate is 8%. The number of periods is 11. The payment is going to be zero. 
I'm going to put the present value in as negative, and I've got some videos on time value of money. What happens is present value and future value have to be opposite signs. So if I put this as negative, my future value will come out to be a positive number, which is much more pleasing to see. There's no payments, but the payments would happen at the end of the period in this case, so it doesn't really matter. So it works out to be they deferred, the Mets deferred the payment of $5.9 million, and then it continued to grow interest. And so at the end of the 11th year, 2011, they owed, instead of $5.9 million, they owed $13.8 million, $13,756,000. Million well, so here's how it works in the payment stage. What we have is starting that day, the day they owe 13,000, I'm sorry, 13 million, then they start making payments. They're gonna make 25 payments at 8%. The present value now in this calculation is 13.7 million. And we need to figure out the payment. What does it take to pay off this, this loan, basically, or this deferred payment? And so here's where we're gonna calculate this using the payment function. So the rate is gonna be 8%. The number of periods is 25. The present value is going to be, I'm going to make it a negative uh, 13 million. The future value is going to be zero. And the payments happen at the beginning of the period. So I'm going to point to um, the, do the one here. Payments happen at the very beginning of the period. So it works out to be exactly, and if you went back and looked at the article, it would say here's exactly how much that they get paid. And so what happens is, in 2000, somebody built an Excel spreadsheet and said, well, here's what it would grow to, and here is the payment. So they have in the contract, I'm sure they say, we're going to defer $5.9 million, and then we'll start making payments starting July 1st, 2011, and the payments, here's how they got the payments. They got $1,193,248.20. They did this with Excel. Somebody built a little Excel spreadsheet, and this is what happened. So let me do a couple little things uh, kind of thinking about this. We could build a growth table. You say, um, can you kind of prove it to me how that 5.9 million grew to 13.7 million or 13.8 million? So let's do this. Let's start with 5.9 million and let's calculate the interest. So 5.9 million times 8%, it grows at 8%. So it's $472,000. And so that means the balance is gonna be 5.9 million plus another 472,000. See, Bobby Bonilla the first year grew the amount that he, uh, that he was owed 472,000. So this is extra compensation uh, interest expense. And so we're gonna just grow at 8% every year. I can copy this all the way down. And that works out to be 8% every year turns out to be 13 million $756,000. That's how they got the original number then to take out the payments. So let's do the payments the same way. This is a little more complicated. So let's start with, let me get rid of all this and show you how this works. Be easy to show how it works on this. Now, all I did was start with the $13.8 million, that's the beginning balance. And the payment we know for 25 years, I've got 25 years of that. So our beginning balance is 13.7 million. The payment is gonna be 1,193. The interest is gonna be zero because the payments happened at the very beginning of the period. So the principal that we're gonna pay off is gonna be 1,193 minus the zero interest. We're gonna pay off principal so that balance of the loan or the deferred payment is going to be 13 minus the 1,193. So we owe, if we're the Mets, we owe Bobby Bonilla at that point, after the first payment, we still owe him $12.5 million. So we're going to just do this. We're going to do a couple more rows and then I'll copy it down and we can look at it. So the next one is our beginning balance is the same as the ending balance. So we can just copy that one down. The interest expense is gonna be the beginning balance times the 8%. I'll make that absolute. So that's 1,005,000 basically. So our principal is gonna be the payment minus the interest. 
So we're paying off the loan in the amount of $188,000. So that loan or that deferred payment goes from $12.5 million down to $12.37 million or $38 million. So we're going to just do one more row and then we'll copy it down and we'll see how this works. So this is our beginning balance is, is last year's ending balance. We have an interest which is the 12.4 million times the 8%. That's 990,000. We'll take the interest, uh, subtract it from the payment. So the payment minus the interest. So the principal goes down 203. And so the 12 million minus the 200,000 gives you something like 12.2 million rather than 12.4 million. Well, we can copy this all the way down. It should work out to be zero. So let's do this. So what we have here is it works out to be zero. So these 25 payments of 1,193,000 pays off this loan of $13.8 million. All right, so what happens is you see the total here. I just totaled this column. It's the $29.8 million. And where we are, I recorded this video in July 2021. The Mets just paid the $1,193,000, and they still owe $9.8 million. So this is what they owe currently after they made that 2021 payment. And they're going to pay still all these payments here. So you see they're still going to pay $16.7 million, even though they owe $9.8 right now because of interest. So let's see, let's just think about how well that, that Bobby Bonilla did. I calculated, I found the S&P 500 returns, and what if they gave him 5.9 million, and there's no taxes, let's just make it a simple world, no taxes, and 5.9 million, and he just invested in the S&P 500, and there's some negative returns, some positive returns, but what happens is it looks like the return is 1.45%. Let me show you how to calculate this. I use the um, RRI function. So let's do RRI, RRI. And so the, uh, the number of periods is gonna be 11 periods. The present value is 5.9 million. The future value is 6.9 million. So over 11 years, it grew $1 million basically. And so that's a 1.45% rate of return in the stock market for the deferred period. Well, Bobby received 8%. So here's his actual growth. It went from 5.9 to 13.8 million, rather than if it was in the S&P 500, it would go to 6.9 million. So getting a guaranteed 8% return is really excellent. There's no risk to that. And uh, he did really, really well. Hey, I hope this is helpful for you. Kind of fun to look at real time value of money problems. Subscribe to my channel. Like this. If you, if you like this video, please press like. And we'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for watching.